everyone, this is Kevin Anna at Eagle Strong Voice. It's November 7th, 2024, the day after the so-called U.S. presidential election. This is a post-election obituary that I entitle, Farewell to the Republic. During the American Revolution, Thomas Paine wrote, in the depth of the winter in Valley Forge, he wrote, It is not a foreign enemy that will destroy a republic, but only we ourselves. And as the Nazis were preparing to invade England in 1940, Winston Churchill wrote, If a people go down fighting against tyranny, they can rise again and recover their freedom. But a people who abjectly surrender and bow before that tyranny will never recover, and their freedom is lost forever. The American Republic has committed suicide. Two and a half centuries after its birth, the nation will once again be ruled by a deranged and unaccountable monarch. It's been said that our best teacher is a black eye, or as the art of war warns us, you do not know your enemy until he has drawn your blood. With the November 5th election of Donald Trump, corporate fascism in America has moved from a political abstraction to a bloody reality. Trump now controls all three branches of government, the Senate and Congress, the Supreme Court, and the presidency. With the Democrats now politically impotent, the Trump regime holds absolute power, not only as a one-man government, but effectively as a single-party state. Does anyone realistically expect Trump to ever relinquish that much power? Like Hitler, Trump is history's dark judgment on a nation. It's pointless now to speak of winners and losers, because all of us are punished by the triumph of autocracy, and that punishment is only going to get worse. This catastrophe wasn't simply because of the November 5th election that unlawfully put an impeached lunatic and criminal back into the Oval Office. It wasn't just the fault of the hordes of mega morons who want a king to rule over them. By not putting Trump on trial for treason after his attempted January 6th coup in the service of Russia, every public official in America betrayed their oath of office to defend the Constitution. Having lost the moral battle against a billionaire oligarch by placing him above the law and smoothing his way into power, the Democrats' election loss was just the next domino to fall. After all, how was America's first criminally convicted president allowed to even be on the November 5th ballot? Regardless of the Trump-dominated Supreme Court's approval of that illegality, the Democrats could have countered that unconstitutional decision by getting state courts to remove Trump's name from the ballot. And equally incredulously, why was Trump treated like a legitimate candidate by the media and Kamala Harris, who on principle should have refused to debate or campaign against a proven traitor and someone who repeatedly violated his presidential oath of office? Now, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, the alleged Russian spies, were electro electrocuted in 1953 for doing a lot less than what Trump has done in giving aid and comfort to America's enemies. Yet even his proven collusion with Russia to subvert the 2016 presidential election has not stopped Trump from heading to the Oval Office rather than to an electric chair or even to a jail cell. No, this is the truth, that the Democrats handed Trump the election by making the classic mistake in warfare of underestimating and not knowing your enemy. None of the happy, overconfident Kamala Harris crowds understood the beast they face and how much it's wrought has undermined America. Mega violence has been a loaded gun thrust at the head of every Democratic voter and county commissioner. Why did Kamala Harris lose every swing state where she was leading in the polls? Because of a Trump orchestrated fear and terror campaign that threatened to violently bring America down if he didn't win the election. The most ruthless thugs usually win. As well, don't forget that Big money runs both the Democrats and the so-called Republicans. The direct rule of the big bourgeoisie without the buffer of political parties is fast becoming the way of the future. So Americans' choice of a dictator isn't that unusual in this age of corporate oligarchy. Besides, even if the Democrats and the courts hadn't enabled Trump's victory, one-man rule has always been inherent in the American presidency. Now, it's a functional requirement of the corporatocracy. 
So nobody should be surprised when King Donald I resumes his use of the government and military as his personal playthings to feed his global business empire, even if it does provoke war. It's not like he hasn't done that before. Besides, that's the way of things now in the age of mega corporate rule. It used to be that what was good for General Motors is, was good for America. Now, what's good for the head CEO is what's good for everyone, whether they like it or not. Now, after all, that's what fascism is. The fusion of big money with government into a massive totalitarian state led by an absolute ruler whose word is law. In such a regime, the masses are kept in line by being pitted against each, each other and pumped with a hateful nationalistic hysteria whose offspring is war abroad and a police state at home. Trump's enemy list is no joke, nor is his plan to deport 11 million Americans. For only the permanent fear and repression of ubiquitous others can keep the dumbed-down population distracted and the dictator on his throne. So welcome to the Third Reich, American style. As Sinclair Lewis said a century ago, when fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying a cross. Sure enough. Well, geopolitically, America's self-destruction suits Russia and China just fine because it's been their game plan all along. As a Russian-sponsored fifth columnist, Donald Trump will ensure that China's hegemony continues to spread and absorb the North American economy and its resources. Trump will deliberately steer America into enormous indebtedness and economic ruination to profit his own global corporate empire and his colleagues in Moscow and Beijing. But this arrangement is also for an even more insidious reason. A republic like America that was founded on the principle of people's self-governance is a threat to China, Russia, and the other oligarchies that operate as the medium for an expanding global corporatocracy. Accordingly, Trump's regi regime will dutifully ensure that America's bold experiment in liberty will not survive much longer. That is, if we let him do that. But with the entire state now controlled by the Republicans, there is no means within the status quo by which to stop the Trump dictatorship. Something much more is needed now, a grassroots revolutionary movement to not only resist the new tyranny, but overthrow it. Americans who remain loyal to their constitutional democracy have already slipped far down the slope to slavery by bending to Trump's neo-fascism. Now is the time to halt that retreat and reclaim the Republic. But that effort will not come from ourselves as we're presently constituted, either individually or politically. Most of us are too wedded to the false assurances and comforts of a rapidly vanishing life. To recover our liberty, we must go through a cleansing, valley forge like catharsis and become free of our fears and false loyalties. Only then can we learn how to not only fight institutionalized tyranny, but overthrow it and the system of dictatorial corporate rule that engendered it. Little that we've been equipped with up to now will help us in this battle. We must learn to think and act under fire as people with a new revolutionary purpose. For history has come full circle. The second American revolution against an absolute monarch has begun. Well, Napoleon observed that people always make revolutions with their eyes upon the past. This will be our biggest temptation and roadblock in the years ahead as Many of us will habitually look to the next election and a revived Democratic Party to undo Trumpism. But in four years, there probably won't be an election. The judicial and political in infrastructure of the old republic will have been dismantled. In the years ahead, there will only be two options for Americans, to either adapt to the corporate fascist regime or to overthrow it. The toppling of a tyrant and tyranny is our God-given and Declaration of Independence guaranteed right and duty as free people. So how can we overturn the Trump regime? First, by doing what justice and the law demand and arrest the criminal Trump before he can assume office. Anything less is to line up with him as a passive accomplice. Second, by casting away our illusions and joining hands across the old party allegiances. Democrats and non-mega Republicans need to coalesce into a new political party of national union to unite all our democratic forces, as happened during the first American Civil War. Finally, if Trump does take office, by boycotting and impeding the Trump government at every level, 
while raising up a genuine republic within our local communities. As is our constitutional right, Americans must begin to take back power through their own self-governing assemblies and courts, protected by local sheriffs and county militia. For only such a dual power can defend us against a growing MAGA violence and be the counterweight that will dissolve the power of the Trump dictatorship at the grassroots, teaching people how to establish liberty by and for themselves. Fortunately, for some years now, Americans have been doing exactly that in order to pre prepare for this crucial moment, and they've been doing it in league with allies in Canada within our sovereign Republic of Canada movement. Armed with the home rule governance provisions guaranteed by many state constitutions, sovereign common law assemblies have formed across America and have passed laws outside federal jurisdiction. Often protected by the existing county sheriffs, these assemblies have created courts of record to pass and enforce local laws according to the will of the people. This network of popular democracy will be an essential bulwark of any national resistance movement, catalyzing millions of Americans into similar reclamations of the law and governance. Because as Samuel Adams said in the year 1774, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. More than a means of resistance, these people's assemblies are in fact the seeds of our new republic. Now in closing, we have to remember that the present catastrophe wasn't caused by something just having to do with politics. The Vietnam veterans used to say that the war has come home. How we see that war now in full savage bloom. Can we expect anything less than MAGA violence? after our long legacy of institutionalized state violence? America has spent its history exterminating black and brown people and putting foreign dictators in power to keep U.S. corporations fat and happy. Since 1945, the CIA has killed more than 7 million people in military coups and wars. The illegal Vietnam War murdered more than 1 million people and tore America apart, introducing the Nixon form of secret government that gave birth to Trumpism. And from all that filth has arisen a clique of billionaires who now run the country, make the laws, impoverish our people, rape the land and its wealth, and control the media and public consciousness. So why is anyone surprised that all that blood and violence has vomited up a Trump and corrupted our republic and his people beyond recognition, setting the stage for totalitarianism? That corruption is most obvious in the MAGA fanatics and in Trump himself, who, like Hitler, is a diagnosed criminal psychopath capable of anything. And yet all Americans must accept responsibility for that rapacious corporate system that has led to our present sickness. We must resolve to actively abolish that system and establish a democratic and cooperative economy where the rule of billionaires is vanquished forever and the nation's wealth is held in common by and for all the people. The truly all people's republic that we will establish on the ashes of Trumpism will be a more complete democracy, embodying the new birth of freedom that we experienced as a people during our last great civil war. For as Abraham Lincoln wrote on the eve of that conflict, I know there is a God and that he hates injustice and slavery. I see the storm coming and I know that his hand is in it. If he has a place and work for me, I believe I am ready. So friends, let us begin now. For the storm is upon us. This is Kevin Anne at Eagle Strong Voice for the Republic of Canada and the Liberty Movement in America. Republicofcanada.org, murderbydecree.com. Stand by for more soon.